In this lesson, we'll get hands-on declaring variables. Let's say that we want to hold some key data of any student who wants to learn Java. Let's say the data that we're collecting includes the name of the person, the age rounded to the nearest integer of the person, the height, which would be a decimal value, which is in centimeters, and a Boolean to hold if the student likes programming or not. So let's start. So for the name, we would declare a string name. And again, it's always a coding wise, it is a good practice for one tab or two spaces, although two spaces is more commonly used. So now we have declared a name, which is of type string. And this variable is inside this method. And that's why this is called as a local variable. You can also have this variable declared outside of the method, inside of the class that is somewhere here. And then it would be called as an instance variable. But now we'll only focus on local variables for now. So this is a variable. The variable name is name. And then it is of type string. And it can hold the value of the name. And next, when it comes to age, we said that it is a rounded integer. And the options that we have for integers are byte, short, integer int, and then long. Uh, byte can only hold up to 127. The age of the person could be anybody. The person who is trying to learn Java may be more than 127 years old. You never know. So that's why we want to keep uh, something which can hold more than 127. Short is a good option because with short, you can go all the way up to 32,000 and it is more than enough to hold the age. So we have the age and then the next value that we want to hold is the height, which could be decimal for which float is a good alternative with so height. So of course for decimal, you have two options float and double. But since the height of a person is again not going to be a very big decimal number, we're going to use float. And then we want to have a Boolean which holds the value of whether the person likes programming or not. So it's going to be a Boolean and we can call that as likes programming. So right now we declared all the variables, but we have not assigned the value. So now we, let's go ahead and assign the value. So for assigning the value, after declaration, you can assign the value. Of course, this is pretty much reasonable. However, you have two lines here. One is declaration and one is assignment. But in any case, you have to have the assignment only after you declare. Obviously, you cannot have this up here. Then Java is not going to like it because you land up assigning a value even before you declare. So this is not acceptable. So the only other option that you have is to have the assignment here. But again, there's no point in having two separate lines here. So you can as well assign it right there. So this is a better option than this, having two separate lines. So let's get rid of this here. And let's say the age is 13 years old and the height is 122.2 centimeters. And of course, Jane likes programming. What do you think? All right. So now we have declared a bunch of variables and we have also assigned values. Notice that for a string, you should have between double quotes. And for all the others, for these two, there is no single or double quotes. And for Boolean, it can only have true or false. Only two values can be assigned for a Boolean. Now let's compile this and run. So how do we compile? Java C, my little program.java. And what do we see? It's complaining about something. Error, incompatible types, possible lossy conversion from double to float. At which line? Float height equal to 152.2. So it's also giving us a clue where it is having an error. So what's going on here is by default, whenever you give a decimal number, it is considered to be a double. Now we are assigning a double into a float. And if you remember, float is a 32 bit and double is a 64 bit. 
So that's why it's complaining. Hey, you're trying to put a number which is sitting in a bigger space into a smaller space. And some of the most significant bits might get dropped off in the process. And that is what it's warning us about. However, 152.2 is within the range of float, but the compiler does not know about it. So that's why it is complaining. So to fix that, you have to put an F next to it to say that this is a floating point number, and then it's going to be happy. There you go. Now it's happy. And now if you want to run, you can run, but nothing is going to be printed out because there is no system out print and statement anywhere, but we are able to successfully compile this and run this program. Now I mentioned that uh, the height is in centimeters, but how do you know? So to keep some information about the program, which is not meant for the computer to do anything about, but for somebody else to understand, you can put a comment statement. So a comment can be added by adding two forward slashes. And here is where I'm going to put some notes about what is the unit of measurement for this height. And I'm gonna mention that this is in centimeters. And when I talk about the age, we are rounding it off. So I'm mentioning that also age is rounded to the nearest integer. So these two lines that you see here are kind of nodes for other programmers to understand, but the computer is not supposed to do anything with this. So those kind of lines are statements which are only meant for the humans and not really for the computer or called comment lines. And you can add comment wherever you want. So here we added after the statement, after the regular Java statement, we added a comment, but you can also move this comment as a separate line by itself here. You can also have a comment line like this. That's also fine. You can have comments anywhere in the, in the program and it's allowed. So this is a single line comment. But supposing your comment spans multiple lines, let's say you have age is rounded to the nearest integer and you also want to mention that height is in centimeters. So I also want to mention that. So you could, you could have two separate comment lines like this or you could have a comment which spans multiple lines. So if you put a slash and a star, then that what that means is that the comment is spanning multiple lines. So you start with the slash and a star, end with a slash and a star. So whatever is enclosed between them, Java is not gonna compile them or run them. Before we proceed further, let us look into the last type of comment called the Java doc comment. For that, let us look into a Java doc. Java doc should be your go-to place for all things related to Java and its API. API stands for Application Programming Interface, which is nothing but a collection of classes given to us as a library, which we make use of to write our programs. Supposing you want to know more about the string class, then what would you do? You open up one of the search engines and key in string Java dog and make a search. And for the most part, you can pick up the very first one that comes up, which is from docs.oracle.com. Oracle is the official company which owns Java. So we are gonna to go to the documentation that's provided by them. When you click on that, you get more about the string class, a description of what is this class about. Uh, you see all these um, description that you have. This is coming from the Java doc. So if you write a class by putting in comments which are meant for Java doc, then by using the Java doc command, anybody can create a web page with all the comments described here. Now, supposing you want to put a comment for this main method, how would you do that? Java doc comment. So for Java doc comment, you start with a forward slash and then two stars and then describe more about this main method. You can say something like, this method is absolutely required to run, run the 
program from the command line. And then you close that comment with a star and a slash. So this will be pulled out, this whole comment section will be pulled out to create a page like this with the comments shown inside the page when you run the Javadoc utility. Of course, for the most part, regular programmers never get to use this Javadoc because this Javadoc is meant for those programmers who are writing their programs to be consumed by the public. That is, anybody can use your program to build their programs. That's when Javadoc is most effective. Since most of the programs that we write are custom applications for a company or it's for our own personal use, in which case you will never get to write this Javadoc comments because it's not really meant for the general public to use and extend or do anything else with your program. Although your utility itself may be used by thousands of people, like supposing you build an app and release it on the Google Play, millions of people could download and use it, but you're not giving your application as a library so that they can construct their own application using your classes. However, if you're giving your classes as a library for them to construct their own applications using your classes, then you should use Javadoc to explain to them how to use your classes. And that's exactly what we do when we use the Java libraries. Whenever you are in doubt, you should always go to the official Java doc and take a deeper look and understand each one of the explanations that is given for the methods and constructors and all that stuff. We'll come to all those things subsequently, but this is your go-to place for all things Java. Now, of course, we directly jumped into the string class and of course, this is Java 7. Right now, the latest version is Java 10. So you can simply change that 7 to 10 and it will take you to the Java 10's string class. But although that is the latest, which version are we using though? And again, previously when we looked into the Java version, that's version, and then here it is actually eight. So if since it is eight here, it's actually a good idea for us to go to eight instead of 10, because what you're using to compile your program is eight. So change this to eight. This would be the official version that you are using. So it's better to reference the version that you're using to compile and run so that you're referencing the right documentation for writing your program. And now if you click on the frames link, it will take you to this page, which gives you all the classes for which Javadoc is available.